Welcome to Let Go, Let EFT, where we are learning and leaning in with you, with your hosts, Michelle Puster and Dr. Laura Spiller. EFT is a beautiful model helping people connect with themselves and the people that matter the most, developed by Dr. Sue Johnson. Hi, Michelle. Good morning. Hi, how are you? Good. Ready to talk about confrontation, EFT style. Yes. Confrontation. I feel like that's probably not the strongest skill of most therapists, at least for myself, being confrontational as a therapist is not my strongest skill. So it's definitely mm-hmm. have, has been one of my uh, learning er- growth areas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how can we be more direct about what we're seeing, about what's um, happening in the cycle, about, you know, some of the shifts that the clients want to make to make changes in their relationship? Um, yes. And it's so let's hard. Talk ab- yes. Let's talk about what makes this hard for us as therapists. Like what what gets in the way of us being gently confrontational with our clients. I think we want to be nice. And there's this part of us that wants everybody to feel good in our sessions. Yes. I mean, it's such a natural desire that we want people to come in, feel better and leave feeling better than what they came. And I think the reality is that's not always realistic or even um, desirable. Like that's not necessarily gonna be how growth happens because mm-hmm. growth means like going to hard places, but yeah, like it's, so I'm thinking about what's scary for me being confrontational is, well, sometimes the person I'm having to be confrontational with is uber confrontational. Like their confrontation skills are really stellar and mine are like, (laughs) I'm still a baby confrontational person. Um, So that's hard to confront someone who's very confrontational, even if it's more with their partner, but you know, when they turn it on us and they start to get confrontational with us as the therapist, that's even more challenging. Um, Yeah. I mean, we're very attuned. So our attachment systems get going, right? There's something dangerous for us. It's like, Oh no this is not where I'm safe here. I'm going to be a bad therapist in their eyes, at least momentarily. Right. That is comfortable. Right. So for sure, the self of the therapist piece is we feel the anxiety in our body. We feel the uneasiness. We feel feel the danger signals. Mm -hmm. And then what are some places that therapists might go? I mean, some therapists who maybe are really confrontational might kind of talk down to them or try to like put them in their place or be corrective. Like you shouldn't do that. It's not okay to talk that way, which I don't think is particularly helpful. (laughs) Right. Right. Um, I was thinking about EFT EFT therapists, especially we can tend to try to like really pretty it up. Mm. Um, You know, um, I think it's Sharon Lee, my mentor, maybe who's kind of jokes that, you know, we have this pile of shit in front of us and we want to like add a bunch of flowers to make it look pretty. And like, maybe that that's going to really fix the problem. (laughs) Uh, So, I mean, I know I do it. I will like translate what they're saying, you know, into something really soft and pretty when I do a reflection, which is just, um, I'm learning, you know, I'm learning is probably not real helpful. Yeah. Um, it sounds it's, good though. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like, you know, we fall in love with the EFT, right? We fall in love with the attachment theory, which helps us bring compassion and understanding for all of these difficult moves and helps us see that we do these things because we care about someone. Right. Um, yeah. So I think that reframing piece is still really important and helpful because it's so helpful for each of them to hear that we see the good in their actions, even when their actions are really kind of ugly. However, I guess we can't skip over the ugly part. And and that's the part that we're talking about is naming the ugly part and naming what we see. And the most 
opportune time to name it is when it happens in our office and there's, you know, the criticisms thrown, the jabs thrown, the, you know, arguing, blaming. blaming. Yes. When it starts and happens right in front of us, then we have this perfect time to use our EFT confrontate, you know, confrontation EFT style in the room. So what might that look or sound like when, when a couple sitting, we ask them how, how are things going and, or they start to tell us about something that happened and they get into blaming or criticism and it starts to get either one or both heated up. Yeah. And I think that we can, you know, just what you were saying earlier, what's hard about it can also help us know when to practice this being direct because mm-hmm. when that, re- I mean, we are typically pretty attuned and mm-hmm. when reactivity happens in the room, our body is going to respond to that in some way. So sort mm-hmm. of knowing what do I feel when the cycle starts going and then using that as a signal of like, oh, it's happening right now. I can mm-hmm. take a deep breath and mm-hmm. then you know, see if I can offer up what, what's happening right now. That's getting us all reactive and in the cycle. Right. Uh, Yeah. I love that using your body and that feeling inside that might cause us to start explaining about how great EFT is or explaining their cycle or explaining, or put, like you said, putting the flowers on the pile of shit or whatever we might do. Oh, you love your partner so much. You know, right. Like, that we could use that as a, ah, the cycle's up and running right now. Yeah. Tango move one. So we could say to them, Hey, can we, can we pause for a second, guys? I'm hearing some blame and criticism right here, right now. I'm hearing it come up in the room right now. Can we just pause for a second? What just happened just before you turned to them? And said, you never do this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or you always do this. Mm-hmm. What is happening right now in the room? What's a, a way that you might say it with your clients? Well, I have been practicing a specific phrase that um, Sharon Lee kind of we gave me in recent supervisions. Um, and I'm doing um, deliberate practice, and I'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, but where I'm um, saying, you know, this, oh, wow, hold on. This is that reactive place, right, that you go to when something painful has been touched. Mm-hmm. Right? It looks like something really important Tinder was touched on there because you pop right up into the blaming sort of safe, protective place, but that also is blaming and critical. So I'm trying mm-hmm. to make sure I say, you know, blaming or some kind of label for the move, but also mm-hmm. try to add in the, the validation of it makes sense that when something mm-hmm. tender is touched, you move to the safer, protective place. Um, and that's important and we need to know about it. And in this place, the blaming criticism starts, you know, is, is what's happening. So trying to kind of name, you know, both the validation of the function, but just naming that behavior too, as that reactive place. Um, right. Yes. I love that. And I love how your voice got slow and you name it. And, and so it's still very validating. You're still very attuned with them. It's not accusatory. It's not blaming them. It's, Mm -hmm. you know, we can be confrontational and be validating of their experience and why they're doing what they're doing at the same time. So people feel heard and understood. And I want to say justified in Mm -hmm. in their actions. Like, I mean, I I guess there's a negative connotation to that because there's actions that they're trying to change. But in reality, People are more likely to change their actions if they feel heard and understood and even justified in what they're doing and why, then they're more likely to be able to shift and do something different rather than that being their only rigid 
response in those moments. And so it's okay to say, gosh, of course you do that. It makes so much sense. And I love to ask, so if I weren't in the room, what would happen next? Because Mm -hmm. it's like, all of a sudden they float above and they go to the 30,000 foot view and they're like, oh, well, I would do this. And then she would storm out or I would slam the door and they, and it's like, wow, look at that. So this is how your cycle unfolds at home. And all of a sudden they're not in it. They're Mm -hmm. coming above it and they can see a piece of what they do and, and Mm -hmm. in the safety of our office. And it kind Mm -hmm. of like, it, it, calms everyone down because it's very calming to not just feel the reactivity, but to notice, ah, this is what I do. This is why I do it. This is what my partner does next. This is what (sighs) it's very calming for all of us to kind Mm -hmm. of be able to see that. And, Mm -hmm. uh, I had a recent, um, with clients where we were talking about even not, not even having to label it blaming or criticism. Cause sometimes it kind of, I don't know, gets into semantics. Was that blaming? Was that criticism? It doesn't matter. It can be all summarized in. I am describing my experience by what you need to do or what you need to stop doing. Right. And this is so helpful to be able to say, hold on a second. I was asking about you and how you were feeling, but then you started to tell me what they are doing and what they always do and what they need to stop doing. But I I hear you. That's real. That's important, but I don't know anything more about what was going on for you. Did you notice how you just did that? I asked about you and then you flipped and told me about them and, and like this light bulb goes off and the, and it's kind of like even something that they could joke about because they're seeing something and seeing this thing that they do and how, Oh yeah, I guess I do do that. So glad you brought that up. Cause I think that's one of those that subtle reactivity that can be easily missed, especially as therapists are learning EFT. Um, And it's such a good thing to point out, right? You're talking about your partner right now. Oh, there you go. Talking about your partner. So even just that little holding up the mirror, oh, you just started talking about your partner. Hold on. Help me know what's happening inside you or tell me, you know, I'm losing, I'm sometimes I'll say I'm losing, you know, I'm I'm losing my ability to kind of understand what's happening for you. Can we come back to you? Right. Uh, Because usually whatever they're saying about their partner is in the realm. It might not be the most heated, like, pointed blame or criticism, but it's in the realm of my partner's not doing so great. And let me tell you about it. Yeah. Well, it's a so subtle, the partner's feeling, you know, blamed. you know, yeah, it's that the, the cycle is fix my partner. You know, it's a element of that too. Um, mm-hmm. They're the problem. Right. And it's a great time to point out to people. Cause they, I've had people say to me, well, what different, like, what good does it do to talk about me or how this hurts me or how is that going to help? And so it's so helpful at this point when they, when they're able to see, oh yeah, I describe my experience by talking about what they should or shouldn't be doing to say, well, if you describe it that way, they can't hear you. If you're feeling hurt, upset, resentful, uh, sad, the only message that's getting across is you're letting me down. You're not living up to my expectations. And so the per it's like a bubble comes up and anything else kind of doesn't get heard by your partner. So I want your partner to be able to hear you. I want them to be able to hear what's happening for you. I want to know what's happening for you. And oftentimes, and maybe in these cases, this client doesn't always know what's happening for themselves. Right. Yeah. True. So there is value, you know, what's happening for you. And, and this way your partner can actually hear you and respond when it comes out as a blame or a criticism or we're human, like we're going to blame or criticize back, or we're going to get defensive or just shut down, stop listening. None of which are the message getting through and being heard and having a felt sense of being heard and understood. And I think when they, when we, 
there's a little bit of the psychoeducation, but it's also in the context of, ah, oh, this is where you get stuck. Ah, oh, this is how, this is what happens. Like you said, this is the pain point that gets hit on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was just thinking that you can even do that experientially, probably, you know, if you're checking with the partner to see, you know, how are they feeling getting this when they get this you know, right now in the room, right? When you're partners telling you about you and what you're doing, what's happening on the inside for you um, so that they can, you know, experientially say, you know, it's so hard to hear it. And then that right. probably a chance to be able to say that, oh, it was, you know, when you say, you know, when I hear this, I feel closer. And when I feel heard the other way, my my walls are coming up. Yes, yeah. exactly. Well, I like that. I love that you're holding that between part of our reflective work, right? That we're not just reflecting what's happening within the person. We're also kind of reflecting and holding up the mirror to what's happening between them. You know, the, the reactivity on one and the impact on the other and keeping that this is the relationship dynamic really in focus is another right. way that we can kind of you know, hold up, be direct. Here's what's happening. Here's what's getting you stuck. Right. And when we get to name, so if we know where we're going with naming their move, like naming, oh, I hear you're blaming right there. Oh, you were, I just, I just heard that zap, uh, that, that zing of a criticism, that jab. It's easier to say those things when we know we're going to take them someplace positive with it. Because then, yes. yes, like you're saying, we can do the encounter and say, ah, oh, that's so help me understand what's going under on under that jab. Mm -hmm. Oh, you are feeling hurt. You are feeling misunderstood. You know, and we kind of we open that up and we do the encounter and we say, hey, can you tell them I felt so hurt when mm -hmm. you walked away? And then as you're pointing out, when that per partner can respond, and then we can say, oh, look at the difference there. When you were able to tell him about the hurt, he reached back, he touched your hand, wow. he looked at you. I see empathy, I see caring. You know, sometimes it doesn't always go so warm and fuzzy, right? And that's okay. <laughs> but we can point out the parts that do go better. We can certainly highlight those and point those out. And we can say, oh, look at the difference. When it gets stuck in the criticism, they can't hear you. They shut down or they, they throw one right back at you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even in that reflection, you're kind of keeping that when you get stuck in the criticism in the reflection, right? I mean, I, you know, really wanting to emphasize that takeaway of we can do the soft, but we don't want to skip the mirror of the things that are difficult and making, you know, creating the stuckness. Um, yes. More you can say things, you know, oh, that's reactivity. That's, you know, when the criticism is happening, that's when, I mean, just kind of keep some of those words in there. Um, it makes it easier for you as a therapist and it makes it easier for them to see that and be willing to say it. Um, yeah. And sometimes I like to use images because images might be more palatable, like, gosh, you know, the way the two of you are just starting to go at it, it's mm -hmm. like, this is a little humorous, which is okay to bring levity to the situation, right? It's like the two of you are on a paintball field and you're each behind your, you know, perspective, like guard, you know, barriers and you're coming out with your paintball gun, you're shooting at each other. Like, yes. whoa, that when, when, when this cycle gets started, it just starts firing back and forth what would it be like to put down your paintball gun? What would it be like yes. to, and then when they do like take a little um, breath, when they do, when they're able to show a little bit of vulnerability, then I might say, Oh, look, it's like you came out from behind the barrier and you're checking to see if it was safe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I might even point out like, oh, it was like you guys came out from your barrier, but you were still holding your paintball gun just to see. And then I was like, yes. of course, it makes so much sense. This has been going on for years. It wouldn't make sense for you all to just 
walk out and, and be in this open, vulnerable place because that has not been safe in your relationship. You can't walk so, into that field without a gun or some kind of protective gear, right? You can't leave the barrier and just walk out there. That's been unsafe for too long. Um, yeah. I love metaphors. I just, I just love that, Michelle. That's great. And it's just, it's, it's, it's a way to kind of keep naming it. Um, I sometimes talk about an Iron Man suit. Um, I have oh, uh, teenage boys, so into all the comics, but the Iron Man suit that just sort of clicks into place. And it's so automatic and you're really sealed up and your weapons are at the ready. And even, you yes. know, can you say, oh, was that the Iron Man suit? Just right there. I think I felt it. Right. What triggered it? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, oh, there was the weapons, you know, coming online for that mm -hmm. too. So, you know, those metaphors are really helpful to be able to keep that language in. And it does kind of have a more playful distant sort of way of talking about it that's maybe you know right that, that brought up one thing I meant to mention earlier about what makes this hard is we have such compassion and attunement with our clients that we know that it can you know cause them that sometimes they are fragile and that naming these things is really painful for them I mean they've always been too much they've always been too harsh you know mm -hmm. and so to have us saying oh there's your you know oh there's your blaming you know so some ways to be able to say that to say it, we've got to say it. It's not gonna, we're not helping them if we're not saying it, but the metaphors, I think, help us say it in a way that is is easier to hold and that they can kind of get their hands around potentially. Um, right. Yeah, there's definitely so ways that we can say it. And that's the, I think that's the um, challenge for us as therapists, right? Is thinking about how can we say this, name it, and how can we say it and name it in a way that's palatable? Like, how can we name it in a way that's palatable for us? You know, that we can, you know, have the courage to actually say it out loud. And in a way that helps our clients be receptive and hear it and feel seen and heard. And like, yeah, like, I see that you do this thing. Like, it's, it's okay that you do this thing. It makes sense that you do this thing, but you're doing this thing. And that's mm -hmm. keeping your partner far away. And of course, what you really want is closeness and connection. And this, this thing that you're doing is, is pushing them farther away. So mm -hmm. let's figure out another way. So, mm -hmm. yeah, this is a great topic. I love, cause it sounds like it's, it's something for both of us that we've had to continue to learn and, yeah. and grow in, and I'm sure it will, it'll continue to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, um, for the takeaway, um, picking one little part of what we've talked about today, just one piece. I mean, is it the is it some kind of pause when you can feel your body tightening up because the cycle is coming alive? Some way of saying, oh, hold on. Feels like maybe there's the cycles here. Mm -hmm. um, that might be something to just practice for a week. See if you can do that. And, you know, I promise you the cycle is coming up and most of your sessions, unless you're solidly in stage two, um, so right. you can kind of notice what feels like the cycle and come up with a way to hit pause and, and name that and then practice that one thing. You can take one of the, the statements that we've made, um, given as examples for this meeting. Um, and if you do put it in the show, you know, put it in the comments. We'd love to hear how you are practicing this or what things are helpful uh, for you. Yeah. And if you have a metaphor that you love, share a, a metaphor with us. We always love good metaphors. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. We'll see you next time. Ooh, ooh, ooh.